think I was attracted to the material early on. My parents had found the plans for um, an A-frame. So um, me and my brothers were put to the task of uh, becoming the, the carpentry crew. And uh, we went up to Northern Pennsylvania and built this house. And one of my jobs early on was um, straightening nails. I enjoyed the repetition of it, the weight of the hammer, the sound of the nails in the can, uh, the accumulated density of that, um, massive nails. I was lucky to have the opportunity in high school to attend um, Carnegie Mellon College as a, a pre-college session. I um, took, during that time, a jewelry class and that was the very first kind of formal training I had uh, making jewelry. But I had this idea that I was gonna be a painter and go to art school and learn painting. And I went to college at University of the Arts, but at the time was called Philadelphia College of Art, and uh, tried to sign up for a painting class as a freshman. And anybody who's a freshman in college knows that you never get your first choice in classes. And there was this opening in a jewelry class. And I took it and then that was it. The hook was set, so to speak, and uh, uh, I knew that I had discovered a passion for this material and this way of working and that it was never going to leave me. You know, I, be, I was very kind of dedicated to finding my voice and my identity within this kind of uh, lineage of silversmiths and metalsmiths over all time through uh, a dedicated series of objects that explored traditional means of making and then a kind of forced revision through um, slicing and peeling apart, and revealing the insides of forms. But at the same time, these images of, say, melted candelabra um, splayed out on the table were, um, they were both devolving but also possibly re-emerging as new forms. So in that, in that rendered liquid state, uh, there was the sense that the object was coming and going, and it sort of describe the condition of silver over all time. It's constantly being re-melted and reimagined to reflect uh, the current culture's state of mind. So that interests me a great deal is when my craft has agency to participate in this discourse. It's interesting to make a long-term commitment to a field. And, you know, sometimes I'm in my studio and I look around and I see a lot of tools that have been owned by other, other silversmiths, silversmiths that are no longer with us. And I see Richard Reinhardt's anvil, his beautiful anvil in front of me here. And, uh, and it's quite intimidating because he was a mentor of mine, but um, at the same time, it is such a beautiful object and it resonates with, with his his strong personality for me. It's, it's many tools are anonymous, of course, but they have the trace of previous owners, and all of that informs me as I'm working on them each day. Success is when I have taken some risks with something that I don't even like myself, the outcome, but then I see it having a conversation with an audience. And even if the conversation is uncomfortable for them as well, the fact that it can provoke um, is successful. You know, it's, it's interesting um, how people respond to my work. And I uh, had this conversation with my gallerist, Sienna Patti, and she was pointing out that uh, when people, from her perspective, when people see my work, they're always asking, what is it for? And I find that what it's for is provoking that question. I think there's something inherent, inherently present in a metal object that suggests that it's game for something. And I think that I want the audience to wonder more about where these things live, how we engage them, where they might be in the future. I think it's interesting how an object can perpetuate that consideration. As an object maker, I think it's important that we make purposeful objects. And I realize that there's a lot of responsibility in putting new things out there. So I feel that I make things that are kind of theoretical in nature. 
Actually, I think that some of this comes from, it's basically my prerogative as a professor. I want to urge a robust discourse for the field, for crafts, for metalsmithing. I try as a teacher to present possibilities, and I want the individual to create their own possibilities. And whichever direction they take it, they will have my work as one example of what's possible. My name is Myra Mimlich-Gray, and I'm a metalsmith.